My name is Anne. I've been the theater teacher and director of the play for this past year here at Arch. Um, I just want to welcome you all to the last performance of Treasure Island. Um, two out of two. We're very excited. We worked very hard for these past weeks and months uh, to put together a good show. Uh, about a year ago, Aaron Herdler texted me and asked if I wanted to teach a theater class to 25 fourth through eighth graders, and I thought to myself, I don't know why I would want to do a thing like that. I'm terrified of middle schoolers. <laughs> but something made me say yes, and I'm so, so glad that I did. The second I met all these kids, they were smart as paint. I knew it from the minute I laid eyes on them. And I have just been kind of blown away by their kindness, their generosity, their creativity, um, and just everything about them. They've been so wonderful. I especially want to thank all of the parents of the kids in the show for raising such wonderful, wonderful children. Um, I really do appreciate you guys and giving me the opportunity to teach them a little something. Uh, so I know that it is not me that you guys came here to see, so I'll stop talking and just welcome you all to Treasure Island. Yeah. 
there? I hear a voice, a young voice. Might you be the proprietor of this tavern? I'm her son. My name is Jim. Well, I am Jim. Will be forgetful. He's a beta one. His name is Beth. Do you purchase from Yes. Do you? I don't know who you mean. I think you do. He's got an eye patch and a cut across his face right now. He's really hard to bend. Is that what you're going to for you? I can sense your hesitation. Give me your hand, then, Jim, and lead me to our friend Bill. Sir, I do not. He's just suffered a stroke and. Give me your hand, boy! There, now, when you straight to Billy Blunter, should break your arm. Leave that boy alone, Peter. Your business is with me. Billy Bones. It's a pleasure to see you, Peter, after so many years. It's only more a pity that you can't see me. Old John, your black dog. Who else, black dog? He's everyone's come to see his old chili family on our bed and on He loves a quiet bear dance, we go. But it's almost like you didn't want me to Well, you found me now. What do you want? What's the hurry? Can't we make time for the usual civilities? I'll have a shot of express right from this dear child and we'll sit down and talk square like the old shipmates we are. I know no such Adam. All I have to is what he gave me and me alone. Black dog, take his left hand by the wrist and bring it to me. And now, it's over for you. The black spot! No! We'll be back in six hours and we'll be having a flight for the arms. Six hours left with them yet. They found me at last. It's all over. They've given me the black spot. The black spot? The black spot. It's the mark of death, you boy. In the days of cats that rule the sea, if you was given the black spot, you was a dead man walking. Why would those men want to give it to you? I actually knew they want more, something they want more than anything else in the world to. Take this chest. Hide it somewhere they'll never be able to find it. Those black men have in that chest. All I know could have been for nothing. Do you hear? Nothing. It's Cap Flint. He's covering me. I'm finished. Well, what was that? The warning signal we 
have to be made sleek, you coward. That boy can't be far. We've nearly got the map. We'll be rich as kings if we find it. Oh. Thought you'd poke a hole over old King's eyes, eh, boy? Come on, where is it? Just give these crime bags what they want, Jim. I don't have anything. We'll see how long it takes for you to change your tune. Ah! Ah!
Tomorrow? I knew the tree was far easier than anticipated. His first stroke of good fortune was when I met a man named Alexander Smolt, whom I engaged to be the ship's captain. I wished for a large crew in case of the pirates, natives, and the odious French. I never knew how we'd find them, but by a remarkable stroke of fortune, a man with one leg hobbled over to see us rigged our new ship. I told him about our expedition. He said he was willing to serve as a ship's captain. Not only that, but he knew many trustworthy men that would be able to complete our crew. One leg? Why are you so alarmed? Billy Bones often talked about a sailor with one leg. He said to beware. He couldn't have met this man, Jim, my boy. He lost his leg serving in the King's Navy. I see. His name is Lon John Silver. You'll get a chance to meet him, for I must ask you to deliver this letter to him. He should be easy to find. He owns a name just like yourself, called the Spider. Well, this is the place. The Spyglass Inn. Excuse me, I'm looking for a gentleman named Silver. Long John Silver. Yeah. My ears are burning. Is someone trespassing on my grave? Mr. Silver, sir? Yes, my lad. Judging by the letter in your hand, you must be a new cabin boy. Please, I am to meet you. Uh, Jim Hawkins, sir, at your service. We sail tomorrow, eh? Let's us sail tomorrow! Yeah. We must have a drink to celebrate. I'll have a, a mocha latte, please, sir. A mocha latte? <laughs> You're a seafarer now, lad. Seafarers only drink espressos. <laughs> well, if you insist, why do you want three drinks? Whatever you mean. There's only two of us. There's a third drink for Ah, the third drink is with Captain Flint. Captain Flint? The pirate? I named this here bird after the legendary Captain Flint, due to his refusal to die. He was already an old cousin when I found him, and he's seen me through 20 years of ferocious sea battles. A few years back, he developed a terrible fondness of caffeine, and since then, I haven't been able to have a drink without him having one too. Here once or twice before, last time that a blind man with them. 
Yes, his name was Pew. He came to the inn as well. Pew! That was his name. If we catch me scoundrel square, I want to be a happy man. What do they want with you? It was a guest of ours they were after. Billy Bones. He had an eye patch and a cut across one cheek. These pirate types always get, getting themselves mutilated in the manner of ways. <laughs> Afraid of one man in the world, a servant with one leg. How curious! You'll think me quite mad, but I thought you might be that man. <laughs> a couple of sea pirates afraid of someone like me? I can't imagine anything so fanciful. <coughs> I've been set off for sea too many, for many years now, not since I lost my leg, carrying my country in the north. Since then, I've had to content myself with cooking roast dinners for these rapscallions. Sail the monster, the sheets are too kind, couldn't they add your mom? Half the pair of you! What's your lying to think? I had two criminals sitting in my own tavern, drinking my own coffee. In my youth, I would have chased them down with myself. But with this peg like the hobble on, what can I do? Don't worry, sir. It's not your fault. I'll vouch for you to the animal. Oh, you would do that for someone like me? You don't know what this means, you old sea dog like me. Many years I've waited to return to the sea. We'll look out for one another, won't we? Yes, sure thing. There's just one thing I'm not sure of between you and me. The crew that Squatch Lonnie has picked out. Landlubbers, the lot of them. They aren't like you or me. They don't have the guts to face whatever we may face at sea. Storms, monsters, maybe even pirates. Pirates? Anything's possible. Luckily, I know a few men who would be happy to join this voyage. Right, lads? Yeah! Take this letter back to Troll. And if you ask any questions, you'll have some sense. Won't you, lad? Uh, sure thing, Mr. Silver. That's my boy. You and I are going to be the best of friends. I can tell. Captain Smollett, sir, requesting a word with the Admiral. We are only the captain's orders, sir. I hope all the sea shaven, seaworthy, and seaworthy. We want no. I don't like this voyage, and I don't like the crew. Smollett, why don't you explain your words? This voyage is going after treasure. And it's my belief that neither of you two gentlemen know what you're letting yourself in for. So I'll tell you, a five to forty are very liars. The promise of a vast fortune can make monsters out of even the very best of men. I dare say you're right. Next to say you don't like the crew. Are they not all good sailors? I don't like them, sir. They have shifty, weasley faces. And all appear to have taken a heavy beating. All is what end I dare to imagine. Fine men to the Navy, and have sustained their wounds fighting for our country. Maud John Silver himself told me so. I'm sure he did, Admiral. It seems that you and I will find a lot to differ on. Our opinions on that ship's cook are just stopped. I know, Silver's roast potatoes are second to none. I wasn't referring to his cooking skills, Admiral. I was referring to whether we can trust him with our lives. He seems on uncommonly good terms with the rest of the crew. Uh, he, made, he made several recommendations to complete our crew. May I suggest, in that case, that this treasure map of yours be kept completely secret and, and hidden from everyone on board, even me and you, Admiral. Very well. I see some merit in the idea. We may be caught and interrogated by the dastardly French. In that case, yeah, I, think I won't trust that. the map to you. Hide it as you see fit. Most excellent suggestion, Captain Smollett. May I make one more before we set sail? Currently, you have your power and weapons in the forehold while you sleep alone in your cabin. Why not bring your own men, Joyce and Red Ruth, to sleep beside the cabin and store your weapons underneath? I see. You should keep the traitor's location secret from the rest of the crew and the weapons of those trusted men at the back of the ship. In other words, you fear me me? No man would set sail in the first place if he believed that. But there is no harm in taking a few small precautions. I will do as you desire. But I think the worst of you. That's as you please, sir. No but I do my duty. Trelawney, I believe you managed to get at least two months on the board of you. That man and long John Silver. Silver's as honest as I can. No doubt about it. But as for that intolerable humbug, I declare his conduct unmanly, unsailory, and downright un-English. Well, we shall see. All right, men.
Israel must not have the stomach to be a sailor. You can ignore anything Israel has to say about it. The first time we put out the sea, he puked so much, we had to change boats. <laughs> there! That must be land! No choice. That looks to be a way. What about over there? Looks to be a way out. How about that? Uh huh. Joyce, that's the same way. <sighs> I so hope that today would be the day we finally signed the contract of marriage. It's my birthday. It's your birthday? Why didn't you say so? Double espresso for the entire crew tonight. Yeah! Yeah! I've never seen a ship's crew so spoiled. Spoil the crew, spoil the voyage. That's my belief. I couldn't agree yeah. more, sir. You yourself are hardly blameless, Lizzie. Shouldn't a doctor like yourself know to keep away from snuff? What? No, this is where I keep my own personal supply of armors on. Nothing quite like a snuff box to lose a different flavor. To be frank, sirs, I don't think either of you are quiet suited to the hardships that a life at sea requires. If I think it was much more than that, I shall explode! He does his job admirably. We shall soon meet your destiny. Thanks, and no small part to escape. But why should we allow ourselves to the finer things in life? We're explorers, not prisoners. Speaking of which, uh, Jim Boy, you couldn't fetch an apple in the stores for me? We shall plan our run. I've been assured that the siphon of land is imminent. Right away, Admiral. And when is that going to be? All we've done is watch and wait. Well, those fools are both heads in the coffee there. And why are we listening to the one-legged cog of silver anyway? I'll tell you why, Mary. Because this one-legged cog has been elected captain. And I alone, among all of you, am a man of my, my word. You can be sure of yourself a Long John Silver ship. Just ask Joe Anderson here, or Tom Morgan. What are we doing? Silver? Put him on the shoulder for others or come down before me, they know what's him. Captain Flatwood had a second thought. Dead man no back said he, and I for one agree with him. I give my vote death. When I'm back home in my mansion, I don't like none of these fools turning up on my doorstep with a sword in it. When the time comes, little. Why take your chances? I can do all for myself. I'll bring his head off the body. If you insist, boys, we'll wait till we get to the island when the treasure's in hold. But let it be known what a pretty eye I think it is. These men, we could leave them here, unharmed, and they would never come back to haunt us. It's a sorry day when you don't even listen to your own elected captain. A sorry day indeed. Ellen, jump up. Will you get me an apple of what we fight? Good idea, Mary. Can you want to go right there? A fine suggestion. A sweet, juicy apple will do me a world of good. John, you must be on this house. Help me take this bear off her way, man. Land ahoy! Land ahoy! Now instead, more. 
reason. O'Brien, oh, it's up to us the farmers who want to take the treasure out so we can get the treasure and sail home. How do we know they haven't taken the treasure with them? You idiot! That's because we were still looking for them. And if they won't give it up willingly, why there's 15 of us and only 4 of them? I don't think they got any of it. Did buy, by all accounts. Oh, that treasure map. <laughs> I haven't seen it since he said too. Tell the truth, boy, or maybe you can first wait till Captain Silver returns. Captain Silver? I don't know who Captain Silver. Captain Silver's the only rightful captain of this ship. He's worth ten of that rat, Smollett. Tie him up until Long John Silver gets back. He can decide what to do with this rat. Hey, curse on that man. But night is drawing in. Joyce, you take the 
first watch. Everyone else try to get some money. Just as reasonable as death. 
Looks like this isn't worth much anymore. Here, Jim, a souvenir for your troubles. Now let's go find that treasure. Well, it was 
until I spent it on
want a medal? If you carried out like this, I would have put you back in your cage. 23 men on the gym and just your whole winter cup of tree.